Welcome back to Native Strength. I'm your host, Ayapesha Lee. In this episode, we're going to continue our dance around the Wheel of Life. We started in the South, where we talked about what a difference our perspective can make in our lives. Then we went to the Southwest, where we examined our interpretation. Now we're ready for the West, where we can use intuition to see the future. This starts with having a thorough understanding of where we stand in life. Sometimes the past, present, and future become confused in our minds, and we're preoccupied with what's happened in the past or frequently give in to worry about the future. We forget to live in the present. This leaves us at the mercy of others and circumstances beyond our control and not in charge of our own destiny. We become confused and feel like we're in the dark. We blame life and others for our reality rather than creating new realities. There are many times that these excuses aren't based on our current reality though, but are more about our fears. For example, maybe we got knocked down when we tried to climb a hill. No matter how hard we tried, we always found ourselves on our backside at the bottom of the hill. At the time, we may not have looked for any other paths up the hill. Time passed and circumstances may have changed, but because we believed that we will always be knocked back down, we've given up trying. This is the negative energy of the West. We don't see that there are other paths or that things have changed over time. In this episode, I will tell you stories and give you an example of what I mean by this. Our inner personas that I introduced you to way back in the flowering tree episode are in the West. It's by communicating with them that we're able to live in the present, see the past in a new light, and envision what we want for the future. Our inner personas are the key to our intuition. The West is the place of the physical body, our physical world, and this is where we are able to transform energies. For example, we can transform our anger into enthusiasm. You may be like me. If someone tells you that you'll never be successful at something, does that just make you more determined to do it? If so, you are transforming their negativity into positive action. This is how we prove those who said we were incapable of success to be wrong. If we're negative, we believe what we've been told in the past about what kind of person we are and about how the world works. We become paralyzed by fear and too worried about what may happen in the future to manifest our own reality. This makes it impossible to see outside of the box and envision alternative ways of achieving our goals. The West stands for the physical world, introspection, and intuition. This is the third step on the wheel of life. After we've danced in the South and examined our perspective, then taken the next step in the Southwest and interpreted what we've perceived, we can then move on to the West. This is where we can begin to see what is possible in the future. This is also one of the 10 magical gifts I told you we were all capable of in the very first episode of this series. When we are willing to re-examine our perspective and reinterpret our life, we open up our ability to see how the future may unfold. As a child, we had limited knowledge and abilities. It's important to re-examine our perceptions with our new wisdom. We interpret what we have learned by looking at life from all points of view. It's at this point we begin to see how the future may unfold. So, let's begin our third step on this dance around the wheel of life. Our first story is about negative female energy, which both men and women can use. Life had been hard for Nikki from day one. She saw her father beat her mother whenever he came home drunk and in a bad mood. Her mother would have left him, but she got pregnant at an early age and never finished high school. 
Her mother thought she could never bring in the kind of money that her father's construction work did, so she tried to stay on his good side. This taught Nikki that men use their physical strength against women. Nikki left home as soon as she was old enough to get a job. Her father had started abusing her too, and she wasn't going to put up with it. She was young and uneducated though, so the only job that she could get was working at a convenience store. She didn't feel safe working nights, so usually she had the day shift. The worst part of her job was her boss, who kept hitting on her. She kept telling him that she had a boyfriend and that she was busy, but he kept pushing. Since Nikki had seen her father use his strength to subjugate her mother, she expected the same thing from her manager. Nikki told herself that if he forced himself on her, she would grab the baseball bat under the counter and let him have it. But deep inside, she wondered if she really had the guts. There was a customer who came in almost every day on his lunch break. He was good looking and seemed to like Nikki a lot. Eventually, he asked her out and she accepted. He took her to a chain restaurant and they were able to have a real conversation for the first time. He ordered dinner for the both of them and she learned that he was fairly well off by her family's standards. His father had given him some money to start a business, and it was going pretty well. Nikki thought he was a bit full of himself. He never asked anything about her, but spent the entire evening talking about him and all of his accomplishments. Since Nikki was used to men being physically abusive and forceful, one who was only verbally pushy didn't seem too bad at all. He had a charm about him. Time went by, and Nikki and the customer went out more. They were becoming very close by the time the manager made his blatant move on Nikki. She told her new boyfriend about it, and he suggested that she quit her job at the convenience store and work for him. Nikki was glad to have a better job and a much safer environment, and she enjoyed the perks that being a boss's girlfriend can bring. When she got pregnant, they decided that she would stay home with the baby after they were wed. Years passed. And Nikki's daughter grew to be a teenager with her own dreams and aspirations. Nikki tried to explain that dreams don't always come true. She remembered how men had a way of intimidating her and her mother and didn't want her daughter to suffer. But Nikki's daughter didn't understand that her mother was just trying to save her from heartache. Nikki decided it was high time to have a talk with her daughter to explain the facts of life, how things are in the real world. Nikki told her daughter, that she had hopes and dreams when she was young too, but people always stomped on them. Nikki's father had made it impossible for her to finish school. Her boss had made work unbearable. The only way she could survive was to accept the job offered by her then husband. When she got pregnant, she had to stop work and take care of her daughter. Life and men had a way of keeping women down and she wanted to prepare her daughter so that she wouldn't be so disappointed when she found out the truth. Nikki's daughter felt like her mother was trying to put limits on her dreams. Her mom wasn't the cheerleader she had hoped she would be. Instead, she made her feel like she had to settle for a life that she really didn't want. None of the things that Nikki experienced had been true for her daughter. The misunderstanding drove them apart. Do you see how Nikki had a limited perspective? She interpreted the world based on her own past experiences. This made her predict a similar experience for her daughter. 
She hadn't taken the time to open her mind with the first two steps on the wheel of life, to be able to see that life could be different from the experiences that she had had. This made her think that her daughter would run into the same limitations and problems that Nikki had in the past. Now, let's look at the positive female energy in the West. Remember, both men and women use female energy. Penny grew up poor, but she always found beauty in small things like flowers. She wanted to open a flower shop when she grew up, and one day she made her dream a reality. Things were going pretty well until a terrible fire destroyed the shop and the insurance company didn't pay her what the store was worth. Not long after that, her husband threw his back out at work. After a few months with no resources to rebuild her business and her husband still too injured to work, it was getting very difficult to pay the bills and put food on the table. Penny talked it over with her husband, and they decided they didn't need two cars. They sold the older one, and Penny got a job at a local department store. Their house was beautiful, but it was near the old flower shop in an expensive area of town that they could no longer afford. Since the flower shop was gone, there was no reason to stay in the expensive neighborhood. After discussing it, they decided to put the house up for sale and find a more reasonable place. The home they lived in didn't have room to grow flowers or vegetables in the yard, so they thought it might be nice to have a place with a bit of a yard, and they began their search. It wasn't long before they found a smaller home in a quiet area where they could grow food and flowers and Penny's husband could recuperate. Penny canned food for the family that fall. She sold produce and flowers on the side of the road. She drove to a more populated area where people bought the things that she had grown. She arranged flowers and lovely vases and bouquets, and she displayed fresh fruits and vegetables from the trunk of her car. Her business was especially good on the weekend, and by the time her husband was ready to go back to work, Penny was supporting them fairly well now that their expenses were so much lower. Penny was not afraid to quickly make the sacrifices necessary to bring her family back from financial devastation. She perceived that there was a major lack of income. She interpreted that if something wasn't done quickly, there would be major repercussions. She saw what would happen in the future if she didn't act quickly. She prioritized their needs first, then their wants, and lastly, their desires. Her maturity and hard work kept them from bankruptcy or worse. She wasn't afraid to quickly change along with the circumstances. It didn't take her long to see that with both of them out of work, their expenses had to change dramatically and quickly or they would be in deep trouble. Penny didn't take time to sit and mope about it or to try to find a way around the inevitable. She studied the situation and she didn't hesitate to take action. Now, let's look at the negative male energy in the West, which can be seen in both men and women. Neil was highly driven. He excelled in school and kept his nose to the grindstone. His parents were very proud of him, and this made him feel good about himself. As he grew, he didn't take time away from his studies to date or to pursue frivolous activities like so many other kids his age. In his senior year of high school, Neil had been attracted to a nice, smart young girl in class. He really enjoyed talking to her and wished they could spend more time together. She enjoyed his company, but didn't think Neil really cared for her because he never asked her out. He was afraid that if he did, and they had a relationship, it might interfere with his studies. If they hit it off, she would probably want to get married and have kids, and that would take a lot of money and time. He figured she would eventually grow tired of him anyway. He decided that it was probably best never to ask her out in the first place. And so, he never did. He never gave love much thought after that.
His grades earned him a nice job after college. He quickly rose to the top of his company and was admired for his cutthroat style. Soon, he was orchestrating hostile takeovers of the competition and expanding at a rapid pace. When Neil's parents asked if he had found a girlfriend yet, he would always dismiss it. He had decided long ago that a partner would be a distraction, but his parents just didn't get it. Neil found joy in reaching new levels of wealth. He was frugal and hardworking, so he rarely spurged on such things as fancy vacations or entertaining. He preferred to spend his money on collectibles and low-risk investments. By the time he was middle-aged, he had a nice garage with a few antique cars, some museum pieces in his study, and an impressive gallery of fine art. Neil had great taste, and his fabulous financial success enabled him to indulge. But he never spent much money on travel or entertaining. He wanted to stay there to guard his goodies and make sure that no one tried to steal his treasures. He felt uncomfortable venturing away from his home. He thought it was safer to stick to the routine that had always led to his success. It was best to keep doing what had always worked. That way, there were no unpleasant surprises. Neil never did find success in love. That didn't matter. He was highly successful in business, and nothing could take that away. Besides, he liked being single. He had never let anyone into his life because he didn't trust anyone really, and he didn't really feel comfortable talking to people. He didn't need people. He was successful without them, he thought, precisely because he didn't waste time with distractions and frivolous things like entertaining people. Eventually, Neil's parents died, and he was left alone with his money and collectibles. He was a lonely man who had a very limited understanding of life. He had no idea how most people really felt about things. He had no comprehension of the struggles and joys that met the rest of humanity every day. And so his colleagues never understood him on a personal level. You see, he had long ago become stagnant in his emotional growth. Neil's success in school as a young child naturally made him feel good about himself. Instead of expanding his comfort zone, he stuck with the first thing he was good at school. He didn't mature and evolve as he aged. Instead of exploring other things in the world that would bring him joy, he focused on the one thing he felt safe with. This evolved into a successful business and a lucrative career, but it was the only thing that brought him joy in life. He sacrificed exploring other things that might have brought him happiness to protect the spoils of his labor. Neil was not willing to try new things, expand his point of view, and explore the rest of the world. And so he died lonely and with a very limited experience of life. Now, let's look at the positive male energy in the West. Perry grew up in the woods. He learned to care for injured birds and deer when he was a young boy. He loved feeding the animals and providing for them in the winter. As he grew, his connection to nature became even stronger, and he found a wonderful woman who had just finished veterinary school to share his life with. Together, they began a life in the country, where his wife could help local farmers care for their livestock. As time went on, they got a nice horse of their own. One day, there was a forest fire. It started small, and all the volunteer firemen and women worked tirelessly to contain it, including Perry. But the winds picked up, and it spread beyond what they could handle. Despite the help from surrounding communities, several houses and barns had been destroyed before it was done. Perry worked hard to help fight the fire, along with his neighbors, and didn't know that his own barn had burned. When he came home exhausted after working on the fire lines for days on end, it was late at night and he couldn't see that the barn was gone. He came through the door and found his wife crying at the kitchen table. 
She told him what had happened, how their horse had been lost, running from the fire. She was beside herself with grief. Perry was on his last legs from the hard battle with the fire, but he pulled himself together, and held her in his arms, and told her it would be okay. He said they would look for the horse in the morning when it was light outside and they could see better. He assured her that they would rebuild the barn and find the horse, and they slept in each other's arms. In the morning, they searched the area for their four-legged family member. They called to the wind. They asked neighbors. They stopped cars on the road, but no one had seen the horse. Perry's wife was distraught. Again, he put her needs ahead of his own and comforted her as they continued to search. As the sun was taking its last rays of light away from the day, a silhouette appeared on the horizon. It was their beloved horse, but the barn was gone. Where would she stay? His wife wanted to stay outside with her to make sure that she didn't run off, but this meant that she would have to stay awake all night long. Perry knew how much the horse meant to her. She needed the horse to be safe after having lost the barn and thinking that the horse was gone forever. He knew what he had to do. Perry opened the front door, went into the kitchen, and got some carrots out of the refrigerator. Then. He put the stopper in the kitchen sink, turned on the tap, and began to fill it with water. He went outside and coaxed the horse into the kitchen, and she spent the night there, drinking out of the sink. The mess she made was worth it to see the tears of joy on his wife's face. They spent the night sleeping with the horse in the kitchen. It was one of the most memorable and romantic nights of his life. Do you see how Perry wasn't afraid to actively do many heroic things? He fought the fire. He comforted his wife several times when he was exhausted. And he put the needs of his horse and his wife above his own desires. He could see what would happen if he didn't do something to change the course of events. And he didn't hesitate to do what needed to be done. This is how we can see the future and prepare for it. Once we can see the situation from all points of view, we can interpret how the events of the past caused the present situation. We can use this information to predict the future. This is intuition, an educated guess as to what will happen next based on the first two steps of the wheel. The future has many branches. Every step we take toward the future eliminates more and more branches until the inevitable is upon us. When we can see these branches and the steps we must take to manifest the future we desire, we have successfully danced in the West on the wheel of life. Positive Penny and Perry studied, evaluated, and envisioned the future they wanted. Negative Neil and Nikki only saw the world from a limited perspective of their own personal experiences. That caused them to interpret the world to be only what they had seen. Now, I'm going to give you an in-depth exercise that will help you to see the future in your life. It doesn't have to be done all at once, but you will have more continuity in your answers if you do. This can get complicated, so be prepared to write down any insightful answers you get. There are five areas in everyone's life and five arenas. These areas and arenas intersect and the aspects and attributes of each of them are always changing. If you're fully aware of your perceptions and interpretations of these areas and arenas, you will be successful in predicting your future. So ask yourself, how you perceive and interpret the arenas of your family, 
social relations, religious community, political environment, and your economic situation. Then ask yourself how these arenas dance with your emotions, your physical needs, the facts you know about the world, and your spiritual awareness. And don't forget to add your creativity. Our creative energy is held in the center of the Wheel of Life. When you see how all of the five arenas, family, society, religious community, political environment, and economic situation work with the five areas, emotional, physical, mental, spiritual, and creative, you get a complete picture. It's only with a clear view of this picture that we can successfully predict our future. I predict that you should join us for our next episode where we will move to the Northwest for a discussion on the importance of planning. We'll show you how to make sure you're using positive male and female energy when planning your life. Most people aren't aware of how they subconsciously make plans that affect their future. But since you've been watching Native Strength, you're ready to examine the Northwest. I'm Haya Paisley. Join us next time for this eye-opening episode. Aya, aya, power.